Okay, folks, so today we're going to review uh, the overall setup and the network connections for a PixCon 16. Uh, this is a Linerama PixCon 16 MK2 uh, version 1 board. Uh, this is a 16 channel uh, pixel controller. Uh, it does have two separate banks, uh, banks 1 through 9, I'm sorry, 1 through 8. Um, run these eight ports here. Uh, bank 9 through 16 is powered from this plug and it runs these ports here. Uh, one important thing to note is that this is a dual voltage board and by that I mean uh, you could run uh, 5 volts pixels on one side and 12 volt pixels on the other or vice versa. Uh, just make sure that whichever power input you're putting in on banks 1 through 8 um, if it's 5 volts input, that your 5 volt pixels are connected on this side. And if you're doing 5 or 12 volt pixels, whatever power input you put on this side um, will power these pixels here. Uh, there is a fan output. Um, the temperature setting for the fan is set up in network preferences, and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. Uh, this fan output is powered from bank 1. Uh, so if you have 12 volts going into bank 1, you'll want to make sure that you have a 12 volt fan. If you have five volts being powered um, to the pixels on bank one, you'll want to make sure you have a five volt fan. Um, there is a 3M fuse here to um, take care of the fan in case there's any problems there. You'd have, you, you do have your factory IP um, button here. So if you need to reset this back to factory IP, you would press and hold this button while applying power. This board, unlike other Lightorama boards, is not programmed by the hardware utility. This board is solely uh, programmed utilizing the Ethernet plug. This Ethernet uh, jack here is connected directly to your computer uh, with no adapter. And then once it's programmed, you have the option of running this board through E131, uh, utilizing this jack directly to your computer on its own separate network, or you can use either of these two jacks as your input and output through a normal RS-485 uh, connection running ELOR. So if you, example, have uh, AC controllers or PIXI controllers, uh, they both utilize these two jacks. You can simply daisy chain the PIXCON uh, utilizing either one of these two ports here. If you decided to run your PIXCON via E131, then you ultimately have four DMX bridge outputs, uh, and these four DMX outputs can be used for uh, running other DMX controllers. Uh, if you're going to run other DMX controllers that are not made by Lightorama, you want to make sure that you move your pins on each one of those ports. Um, each pixel port is covered by a 4 amp fuse, so be sure to check that if you're having any issues with uh, the lights coming on. Um, I do have a couple pixels set up on here for our test later on. So we're going to get over to the computer and give this a go on the network preferences and show you how to get it connected. All right, folks, so headed back over to the computer now. We're going to program the PixCon 16 to be able to get it ready to run with our show. So first things first, let's go over to Lightorama Network Preferences. Let's open that up. And... You can see I'm using 566 Pro. Uh, other versions should be very similar. Well, let's go over to Find Configure PixCon 16. And at this point, we bring up the Lightorama PixCon 16 utility. In the utility, you want to make sure that you have the correct adapter selected. Here, you'll see a drop down. I have two different adapters. Uh, the first one is 192.168.2.2, and the second one. Uh, dot one dot 21 this one is my wireless I don't want to select that one I want to make sure that I'm on my wired connection my PixCon is plugged into my Ethernet jack on the computer and it's very important that you're on the correct adapter otherwise you will not be able to find the PixCon so I'm gonna hit search here and as you can see the PixCon that's connected uh, came up here and it's uh, preset from the factory with an IP address of 192.168.0.50 now because the way it's set up with this IP address and my adapter is on a different IP address, <clears throat> these two pieces of equipment are not going to be able to communicate during your show until we force a new IP address onto the PixCon. In order to do that, 
you're going to want to double click on the blue line and you're going to come up with a warning and that warning simply is telling you that uh, the two IP addresses don't match. So just a quick history on IP addresses, 192.168.2, uh, that's considered your network ID. Your network ID needs to match all components in your network so that they can all speak to each other. The last number after the period is your host. That has to be a unique name, a unique number to each device on your network, whether it's your computer, your PIXCON, um, or any other controller that you have. So when you get this message, you simply want to click yes, and what that's going to do, it's going to bring up the PIXCON configuration. That PIXCON configuration is going to have an IP address of 192.168.0.50. Uh, um, I've gone ahead here and changed it to .2.10. This is going to be the 10th controller in my show. Uh, it's going to match the first three numbers of my adapter, and that's what we want. You want to click on static, and then you want to click OK. Let me raise that up there. Here we go. Now, upon hit and search one more time, you're going to see that I now have a new IP address for my PIXCON. 192.168.2.2 is my adapter, and then this one here for my PIXCON.2.10. So now they're both on the same network ID, and they each have a unique host number. So now we know they're going to communicate. Once I come back into the configuration, uh, there's a couple tabs over the top, and we'll go through them and review them here real quickly. So the control tab is the first one you want to go into after setting the IP. And the control tab is really going to give you access to the different ports and universes on your PIXCON. If you have a uh, pixel tree from LOR, uh, 50 bulbs on each port, you can simply leave this set up to where you have uh, one universe on port one. It's going to start on channel one. You can come in here and type in 50 for 50 pixels per port and leave the rest of the settings uh, as default and your PIXCON is going to work uh, just right. Now, if you wanted to get into a more advanced uh, assignment of universes and ports, uh, we're going to cover this on a, on a later video, but an advanced output configuration is also available so that you can assign multiple universes per port if you're running a large, you know, dense prop and you want to get more pixels per port out of your PIXCON. So stay tuned for another video later on. So we'll come back here. We'll take the check mark out of advanced. Right now I have start universe one um, and then start channel one. And this is automatically going to continue to the other 16 ports. The DMX outputs that we spoke about earlier, those four black Ethernet jacks on the computer, on the, uh, on the PIXCON, those are going to be your outputs here. So if you wanted to use a DMX output, for example, on, on output number one, you'd want to make sure you tell what universe you need assigned to that DMX output. Going over to the LED tab, you want to make sure you select the correct pixel IC. I'm using 2811s, LOR's uh, bulbs are 2801s. Whichever bulbs you're using, you want to make sure that you have the correct IC chip selected so that your output is, uh, is correct. If you head over to the test tab, actually before we do the test tab, let's head over to the miscellaneous tab. Uh, here is where you can actually give your PIXCON a name. This way it may be easier to find if you have multiple PIXCONs. Uh, we talked earlier about the fan. Here's where you'll change the temperature of the fan um, and at what temperature you need it to, to come on on. The voltage banks down here, uh, you can see I'm running 12 volts on both sides, but if you happen to be running 5 volts and 12 volts on either bank, um, you'll get the voltage breakdowns up here. So let's go back up to the test tab. And here is where you can run the live test on your PIXCON to make sure that not only your pixel is working, but that it's communicating. So. Let me click on the RGBW cycle. And as we pan over here, you can see that the LEDs are going through the RGWB cycle. So heading back over to the computer, you can come over here and turn the live data off and click OK. So now that we have our PIXCON set up, all right, now we're back at Lightarama Network Preferences. The last step here is to come down to the universe where my pixel tree is going to be running. So for me, it's going to be universe 100. And I need to tell it how it's going to get its information. So in order to do that, I want to come over to the universe 100. And I want to click on use E131 protocol. In this case, I want to make sure that I specify that universe 100 is sent via the 131 protocol to the IP address of the PIXCON that we just set up. So I'm going to here, I'm going to change it to 192.168.2.10. And I want it to um, work over the standard E131 protocol. 
and it is a 16 port it is a 16 um, port pixel tree so I'm going to use up all 16 ports so I'm going to say 16 universes here and I'm going to click OK and what that's going to do is it's going to populate all 16 universes for me so universe 100 through universe 115 and it's simply going to say send these universes to this IP address utilizing this protocol in the comments you can type in that it's a pixel tree or any other comment that you like to help identify when once you have a lot of universes and a lot of pixels that you're trying to manage it's always helpful to have a comment in here so that you can quickly see what's what don't forget to hit apply and your pixcon is now set up scan our qr code at the end of this video for more tutorials from right around